Hello wonderful people, it's Medicosis Perfectionellus. Welcome back to my physics playlist. In previous videos, we talked about scalars versus vectors. We talked about speed versus velocity. We talked about mass versus weight. We talked about distance versus displacement and much more. And then we started talking about thermodynamics. The last video was about how to convert Celsius to Kelvin. Today, let's convert Fahrenheit to Celsius and back from Celsius to Fahrenheit. What are we measuring? Well, these are measuring units for temperature. Temperature measures the average kinetic energy in a medium. The medium could be solid, liquid, or gas. Is temperature a scalar quantity or a vector quantity? Temperature is a scalar quantity because it has a magnitude only but no direction. So if you have the temperature in Celsius and you want to convert it to Fahrenheit, take that temperature in Celsius, multiply it by 9 over 5, and then add 32 to that. Let's say that you are on an exam and a calculator is not allowed and you are running out of time. How can you convert this very quickly? Instead of 9 over 5, multiply by 2. And instead of adding 32, just add 30. So if I told you that the temperature is 20 degrees Celsius, multiply that by 2, you get 40. At 30, you get 70, which is close enough. The actual answer is 68, so 70 is very close. Click the like button, click the subscribe button, and let's get started. Also, please watch the previous video before this one. You can find all of my physics videos in my physics playlist. Try to watch them in order for maximum understanding and retention. And check out the other playlists as well. Let's practice. Adam has a core body temperature of 37 degrees Celsius. Convert this temperature to Fahrenheit. Feel free to pause the video and try to answer this yourself. I know that temperature in Fahrenheit equals temperature in Celsius, but I need to multiply this by 9 over 5. And then what? You add to that 32. Therefore, I have 9 over 5, multiply this by 37, and then when you multiply them, add 32, which gives me an answer of 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. These are actual numbers. This is about the average normal human temperature in Celsius. And this is the same temperature in Fahrenheit. Same answer in color. Pause and review. Next, Sarah has fever. Poor lady. A 40 degrees Celsius or centigrade. Same thing. What's her body temperature on the Fahrenheit scale? Now pause. What should we do? Fahrenheit equals Celsius, multiply this by 9 over 5, and then you add 32 to the whole shebang. 9 over 5, multiplied by 40, and then when you multiply them, you add 32, which will give me an answer of 104 degrees Fahrenheit. If you want to see more physics videos in the future, please drop a fever emoji in the comments. Question 3. If absolute zero temperature is negative 273 degrees Celsius, how much is that on the Fahrenheit scale? Please pause. Same thing. Fahrenheit equals 9 over 5 multiplied by degrees Celsius plus 32, which equals 9 over 5 multiplied by negative 273, and then you add to that 32, which will give me an answer of negative 459 0.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Remember, when we talked about Kelvin scale last video, Kelvin can never be negative. Celsius can be negative, Fahrenheit can be negative, but not Kelvin. Because the lowest possible temperature ever, which is the absolute zero temperature, is zero degrees Kelvin. You cannot get lower than zero on the Kelvin scale. Next, water boils at blank degrees Fahrenheit. Well, we know that water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. Let's convert this to Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit equals 9 over 5 multiplied by the temperature in Celsius plus 32, which will give me 9 over 5, multiply this by 100, and then you add 32 to that. Let's divide by 5, this becomes 1. Divide by 5, this becomes 20. 20 times 9 is 180 like this. Add to that 32, you get the final answer of 212 degrees Fahrenheit, which is choice D. Let's say that on your exam, no calculators are allowed. Well, take that 100 and multiply it by 2, you get 200. Add to that 30, and you get 230. The closest thing that I have here is choice D. Next, water freezes at blank degrees Fahrenheit. This is how we do it. Fahrenheit equals Celsius, multiplied by 9 over 5, and then you add to that 32. So Fahrenheit equals zero Celsius, because that's freezing, 
multiply this by anything, you get zero plus 32, you get positive 32 degrees Fahrenheit, which is choice D. Number six, room temperature equals what on the Fahrenheit scale? We know that room temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. Now let's convert. So I have nine over five, multiply this by degrees Celsius and add to that 32. So degrees in Fahrenheit equals nine over five, multiplied by 25, and then you add to that 32. Divide by five, you get one, divide by five, you get five. Nine times five is 45. 45 plus 32 equals 77. Next, we have a sample of dry ice, a temperature of negative 78 degrees Celsius. This is equivalent to blank degrees Fahrenheit. Let's go. So I have the temperature in Celsius, which is negative 78. Fahrenheit is that negative 78. And then you multiply it by 9 over 5. And before you know it, you add 32. And this gives me a final answer of 108.4 degrees Fahrenheit. So the answer is, well, what's the closest thing? B. Now let's do the opposite. They gave me the temperature in Fahrenheit, but they want the temperature in Celsius. So how can we do it? Easy. Start with what you know. Fahrenheit equals 9 over 5 Celsius plus 32. What if I want Celsius alone? Bring the 32 to the opposite side by changing the sign. So Fahrenheit minus 32 equals 9 over 5 Celsius. How do I get rid of this 9 over 5? Multiply each side of the equation by 5 over 9, just like that. And before you know it, this will cancel with this, and I will end up with Celsius equals 5 over 9, open parentheses, Fahrenheit minus 32. Let's go. What's the number in Fahrenheit? 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. Subtract 32 from this, you get 68. Multiply this by 5 over 9, and if you are in a rush, multiply by half. When you multiply by 5 over 9, you get something similar to 37.777, etc. So what's the closest one? B. Let's say you multiplied by half because you did not have enough time. It will give you 34, which is close enough. Now this is a beast of a question. Please take a moment to read it, pause, and try to solve this yourself. Let's go. We will suppose that we'll have two temperatures on the Celsius scale. Let's pick any random two numbers with a difference between them. So let's say zero degrees Celsius and 100 degrees Celsius. Amazing. What's the delta between them? What's the difference? Well, in this case, the difference is 100. So that's the X. Okay, let's convert this to Fahrenheit and convert that to Fahrenheit and see the delta or the difference between them. Let's go. By converting the zero to Fahrenheit, what do you do? You multiply this by nine over five, which gives you zero. Add 32 to this, you get 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's do the same thing here. Multiply this by nine over five, what do you get? Here is nine times 100 is 900 divided by five. It gives me 180. Add to that 32 and you get 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Now let's take the difference. What's the difference between 212 and 32? 212 minus 32 equals 180. So that is my delta. Okay, the question is, how much is that delta? Let's call it just delta like this. So if I know that x is 100, what's the delta? Let's do a simple division. Notice that they want the difference between them on the Fahrenheit scale. So let's do the delta for Fahrenheit on top like this and that will be 180, okay? And what's the delta for the Celsius? 100, put that on the bottom. 180 divided by 100 will give me what? Well, let's cancel zero with zero. 18 over 10 is the same thing as nine over five, which means what? This delta is nine over five times X because X is 100. Nine over five of this is about twice of that. So close enough making the correct answer C. Now, if you pick any other two random temperatures, the delta will be nine over five of the previous delta, guaranteed. Try it yourself. We've learned in the last video that the delta T in Celsius is the exact same thing as delta T in Kelvin. Do you remember that? But now between Celsius and Fahrenheit, the difference is not the same. Remember when we did two temperatures, the delta was 100 but the delta Fahrenheit was 180, which means delta Fahrenheit is almost double that of Celsius and the delta in Celsius is almost half of that 
of Fahrenheit. 100 is about a half of 180, and 180 is about a double of the 100. If I know the temperature in Celsius, how can I convert to Fahrenheit? Use this equation. But how about the other way around? If I know the Fahrenheit, how can I go to Celsius? Easy. Celsius equals 5 over 9. Don't forget to open the parentheses. Fahrenheit, do not close the parentheses. Minus 32, as we have just discussed. What's the boiling point on the Celsius? It's 100. And what's the boiling of water temperature on the Fahrenheit? 212. Water freezes at 0 degrees Celsius and 32 degrees Fahrenheit. This delta is 100. This delta is 180. Because this delta is 100, that's why it's called the centigrade scale. Centi means 1 one-hundredth of. Centimeter is 1 one-hundredth of a meter. A dollar contains 100 cents. A Roman centurion has 100 fighters under his command. Dry ice, which is solid carbon dioxide, has a temperature of about negative 78 Celsius and negative 108 Fahrenheit. The absolute zero degrees Kelvin is equivalent to negative 273 Celsius and negative 459 degrees Fahrenheit. If you need some help with physics, I can personally tutor you. Just go to medicosisperfectionalis.com to book some sessions. You can download all of these handwritten physics notes on my website, medicosisperfectionalis.com. I also have general chemistry notes, biochemistry notes, organic chemistry notes, biology notes, physiology notes, all kinds of notes. Don't forget to check out my other playlists as well. I teach science and medicine. If you found this video to be helpful, please consider supporting my channel by buying me a coffee. Go to buymeacoffee.com slash medicosis. To learn about physiology, like how your kidney functions, to learn about the GFR, micturition reflex, plasma clearance, the drama that takes place in the proximal tubule, loop of Henle, distal tubule, collecting ducts, etc., download my kidney physiology course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. There are more than 600 premium videos available on this channel when you click the join button and choose the highest tier. Please subscribe, hit the bell, click the join button, support my channel on Patreon, PayPal, or Venmo, go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases, or if you would like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine, chemistry, and physics make perfect sense.